Am I the asshole for calling the police on my fiancé? Last night my, 35M, fiancé, 38F, left in the evening to give a friend's son a ride back to his home. She implied she'd be home before 9. She left at around 7.45. 10.15 rolled around and she still wasn't home. I texted and she apologized to me, saying that her friend's son was actually in the next town over, maybe 30 minutes away, and she was coming home now. 11.45 rolled around and she still hadn't come home, so I called her to no answer. Texted her to no response. I was getting very upset. 12.30 rolled around and still no response and no answer to my phone calls. I was extremely angry. 1.30 rolled around and my anger had completely transformed into worry. Not answering my calls and texts not read. Around 1.45 I called the police. I have always heard that the first 24 hours of someone being missing is the most important, so I didn't want to delay. I asked them to let me know if there had been any traffic accidents involving her car, and the operator told me that they would put out the word and send some cops to check along the route she would travel. I called all the hospitals in the area to check if she has been checked in and I waited outside watching the road for her car for three hours, partially because I didn't want the kids to hear me on the phone with hospitals, and secondly because I was sick with worry. At 7 a.m. she came home. She apologized for being out and said she had no excuse. She was driving home and felt tired like she was falling asleep at the wheel, so she pulled over to the side of the road to sleep. When she did that, she found that her brand new phone had stopped working. She says she napped anyway because it was the responsible thing to do, and then came home at 7 a.m. to bring the kids to school and get to work on time. I immediately called the police and told them that she had come home safely and gave them the case number and told them to stop searching, which they did. My fiance brought the kids to school and left for work. I set out to start cleaning. Cleaning distresses me sometimes, and I got a call from a policeman asking where she worked. I told him, and asked why, and I was informed that it was their policy to check on the person's wellness after a missing person is found. I asked them to not go by her work but to give her a call instead. He said he couldn't promise. My fiancé is relatively new to her job. A police officer showed up and asked to speak with her. She is now enraged at me for calling the police and, sending a cop to her work, and making her look bad. She is saying I overreacted and that she wasn't missing and that I was punishing her for doing the responsible thing and not driving while drowsy. She is saying that she is never going to leave the house again except for work, because she is afraid I'm going to call the cops on her again. So did I overreact? Should I have waited two days like she suggests? Not the asshole. Dot but you know she's lying, right? Not the asshole I don't believe her story one bit. Driving a kid home and disappearing for the entire night is a massive red flag. How does she not even know where he lives when she started the drive? How old is this kid? Pulling over and sleeping on the side of a road for a 30-minute drive is nuts. She is now turning this around to say she is the victim of your actions. I think your fiancé is getting railed two towns over my guy. Not the asshole. But you know that isn't the truth, right? Am I the asshole for using a spray bottle to train my nephew? My nephew is a rainbow baby. My sister had a lot of trouble conceiving and he was kind of a miracle. She was 42 when she finally managed to give birth. She was on bed rest for the last three months of her pregnancy. My nephew is now six and, while I love him, he is a monster. He throws tantrums when things don't go his way. He screams if he loses playing a game. He refuses to understand why he can't ride my seven-year-old Saint Bernard. And he thinks any food is his. My husband is diabetic and he loves cookies. I found a bakery that makes amazing sugar-free cookies but they are expensive. I budget for them because my husband deserves his treats when he gets home from work. My sister was visiting and my nephew was running around like a squirrel. He tripped and started crying so my sister picked him up. He saw the cookie container on the counter and started asking for some. I said no that they were special cookies for his uncle. I offered him a regular cookie or some fruit but he got all upset that he was being denied. My sister asked if he could please have a cookie. I relented and gave him one. He took a bite and said it was yucky and threw it on the ground. I was a little upset. A little while later he came back and asked for another cookie. I said no. My sister said to just give him one. I told her no, he wasted the last one. He started screaming that he wanted a cookie. I stood my ground. He eventually went away. Next time he came he didn't ask. He just went for the container. I grabbed the spray bottle I used to keep the cat off the counter. 
I gave him a couple of squirts and said, no, he got startled and ran away. My sister said her son isn't an animal to be reprimanded with water. The next time he came into the kitchen I put my hand on the spray bottle. He didn't even look at the counter and he went away. My sister called my parents to tell on me for treating her kid like that. They are mad at me for not giving in to the poor baby. Not the asshole. Does the spray bottle work on your sister? It's not the kid's fault, it's the mother's. So when she fails to discipline him, grab the spray bottle and squirt her until she controls her kid. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. If mom won't do the hard work of parenting then you're left to your own devices. That message seemed to get through. I suspect it was a more knee-jerk reaction rather than your best, parenting. So I wouldn't repeat it, but that kid needs to learn about boundaries. Not the asshole. Your method of enforcing boundaries may be a little unorthodox, but it was effective, and hilarious. Now it's time to set some boundaries with your sister too. If she tries to get you to give in to her kid's tantrums, tell her sweetly that the poor whittle baby must be tired, overwhelmed, not feeling well and she needs to take him home. If she argues, you have a spray bottle and you know how to use it. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay for fix the babysitter's laptop? I, single mom of two, hired a babysitter after I started working a new job. Used to do WFH for two years. My kids are eight and six. The babysitter is 17. She brings her laptop with her to study which is perfectly okay with me as long as she keeps an eye on the kids. Yesterday, I came home and the babysitter showed me her laptop that got broken by my youngest. I was shocked I asked how this happened, and she said that she left the laptop in the living room and went to make the kids lunch but my youngest grabbed it and ran with it till he dropped it and broke the screen. I said that was horrible and apologized to her but stated it was her fault for leaving the laptop within reach of children. She said she thought my kids were old enough to know not to touch other stuff. I explained how they might have thought it belonged to us since it was in our house. She asked if I could pay for it to get fixed but I refused and insisted it was her problem not mine. She ranted about having exams soon and not having enough money to get it fixed. We argued and I had to tell her to go home after she persisted. Later on, I got a call from her dad basically blaming the whole thing on me, and demanding I pay to get the laptop fixed but I still refused. Now she's refusing to come again unless I pay her for the laptop repair even though I paid her in advance to watch the kids. You are the asshole. A 6 and 8 year old are absolutely old enough to know not to touch, run around with other people's electronics. Signed. Mother of a 6 year old. You are the asshole. You pay for what your kids destroy. That's part of being a parent. End of story. At what age do you think kids should learn not to touch things that don't belong to them? It's super concerning to me that you think, as a parent of two children, that this shouldn't have been taught to your kids years ago. Like hello? You are the asshole. You are the asshole. Your kid broke it, and not accidentally either. They're also 6 and 8, not 2 and 4. They knew it was an electronic device, and unless you literally have the exact same computer, they knew it was hers. I hope your babysitter takes you to small claims court. You are the asshole. Am I the asshole for outing my dad to my grandparents because I was forced to share my car? My, 17F. Parents divorced when I was 6. My dad remarried when I was 10 to my stepmom, who has a kid, 16M. My stepbrother's dad is not in the picture. Neither is my mom, so we both live full time in the same house. I'm pretty close with my parental grandparents because I spend the whole summer with them and help them around. My stepbrother is always invited, but he never comes. It's not that my grandparents don't love him or accept him, but they're not close. For my 17th birthday, my granddad gave me his old truck and I was over the moon. It's a pretty classic that he owned when he was 17 himself and took real care of it. It doesn't look brand new, but work as good as new and it's super sentimental. I've loved that truck ever since I was a kid and I'm so happy it's mine. My granddad and I were making plans so I could paint it pink and change the seats, but it turns out that per my dad comment, I can't since it's not just my truck, but also my stepbrothers. I said new uh, my granddad gave it to me, it's mine and I can do whatever I want with it, it's still under my granddad's name, but I pay the insurance and gas. My dad said it wasn't fair because they didn't get him a truck on his birthday so it's only fair I have to share. We fought for days, but I was eventually forced to give up the key so he could make a copy. I despise every moment my stepbrother drives my car. I hate the fucking schedule my dad made because it favors him and I hate my stepbrother because he just went with it. 
To be honest it never occurred to me to tell my granddad what was going on. This past Friday, he and my grandma came to give me a pink plate frame that he found and offered to change it for me. I said thank you, but that I couldn't and I just spilled everything, the schedule, the forced sharing, the yelling, the copy of my key and the fact that I couldn't change the truck to my liking because my SB wasn't gonna drive, a pink car. Needless to say, my granddad was furious. He went inside and yelled to my dad, demanded the copy of the key my stepbrother had and said that if he ever drives that truck again without my permission, he's calling the police and getting him arrested. My dad's mad, like, real mad, he said it was wrong in so many levels because my SB was, innocent, and that I made my granddad berate him for, nothing. He called me a selfish and entitled brat and is threatening me to make me pay rent for what I did. My SB called me a nasshole and that I could have just, asked for the truck. Not the asshole. Your dad sucks. He called me a selfish and entitled brat and is threatening me to make me pay rent for what I did. Your grandparents need to know about this too. Edit. Now you can paint the truck pink and do all the things that you wanted to do. Not the asshole, but I think you should ask grandpa to hang on to the truck for you until you're 18 and or out of the house and don't need to worry about anyone trying to force you to share. And speaking of 18, remind dad that unless he wants to have a conversation with the cops anyway, he can't charge you rent. I'm starting to understand why your mother divorced your father. It seems as if he does not respect women at all. You're 17? Just go ask if your grandparents if you can stay with them. Get a little job to help out. Not the asshole. I'd see if you could move in with your grandparents until you're 18, if possible.